decided to start paying an off-duty sheriff to come in and work security for us. Uh, he sits out in the lobby in full uniform. All of his uh, gear is on. And nice, real nice guy. I think a lot of them. Uh, turns out he actually used to work with a buddy of mine that is now a retired sheriff. Uh, but he's been a county sheriff for seven, eight years at this point. Real nice guy. And today, we're, right now, due to social distancing, our church is running uh, two services so that we can minimize the amount of people that, that's in the sanctuary at a given point in time. So I sit through the first service with my family, and during the second service, we had social distance children's activities, so they went to that, and I'm in the praise band, so I had to play the, the second service's worship. Well, after that, I've heard the sermon, so I step out to go to the restroom, and then I, the sheriff, he's uh, is working security on the side, he's sitting out there, so I get to talking to him about stuff. My wife had her service dog. She had to take him out. So she comes up and we get talking about stuff. Just, you know, uh, things that are going on. And I'm like, man, did you hear about Atlanta? And I got uh, the officer that shot Rashard Brooks plainly in self-defense and, in, and theoretically in defense of others um, is currently being brought up on murder charges, which in Georgia, if convicted, could be death penalty. And so there was what they called the blue flu running around Atlanta, where uh, people, where law enforcement officers were calling into work. And he and I got talking about it. And I told them, you know, like, it was 20 minutes where they were perfectly cordial, perfectly fine. You know, here's what led to it. The officers are being very nice, respectful to the man. The guy's being very nice, respectful to the officers. And when they went to cuff him and place him under arrest after he failed his breathalyzer, um, that's when it went downhill rapidly. And he and I got talking. He's like, I don't blame the cops for doing what they did. And I said, I don't either. You know, it's established Georgia case law. And we, um, we talked a little bit about that. And he's like, you know, I'm very laid back. I'm very laid back. And I said, out of all the interactions I've ever had with a cop, I can think of one or two that are that left a sour taste in my mouth. And mom and dad, years ago, they used to live uh, in a wet county when the neighboring counties were dry and so that I drove through a ton of DUI checkpoints coming to visit my parents and I've driven through other DUI checkpoints on road trips and things like that I've been pulled over a bunch I've only got a handful of tickets but I've been pulled over a lot and I said all those interactions I can think of one or two interactions with a cop that stick out as you know the cop was kind of a jerk and he's like, it happens, it happens, you know, I might come across as a jerk sometimes, because I might have been having a bad day right before you did whatever you did that made me have to get out of my car. I said, that's fair, and I get it. You know, I can be a jerk because someone cut me off in traffic, and then I show up at work in a foul mood all night, or whatever. So, but he and I talked for a lot, and he said, you know, I'm very easy going. I never want to escalate the situation because I don't want to have to use any of this stuff that they give me. He doesn't want to have to use his taser or his gun. That's a huge, uh, barring whether he was justified or not in it, barring whether it was legally right or not, barring whether or not it was morally wrong, that is a huge risk and huge headache for him to do that. You know, you can paint whatever scenario you want. If he tasers, pepper sprays, or shoots at somebody and something goes wrong, it's his butt on the line to a point. And so I wouldn't want to use any of the gear that they give me. 
I'd want to be good at, at anything I had with me, you know, good at using a taser or a gun or pepper spray or, you know, well-versed in pepper spray, things like that. I'd want to know how to to use it and use it well in the event of. I also want to be very good in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the event of. But um, the cops, and, and, you know, he said, take it to court. He said, if I'm in the wrong, take me to court. And I said, you know, I've, I've been in a couple situations where I thought I might end up in jail today. I really might. Uh, the most recent one, give you a good example, I got pulled over for, um, what was it? Burnt out license plate lights. And they weren't even burnt out, they had dimmed. The car was, what, 12, 13 years old when I got pulled over, and so the license plate lights were not bright enough for the cop to read my plate. That's fair. That's fine. I'll get them fixed. But, during that stop, I pull out my, my license, show him my license, everything's good on that. I try to find my registration to prove the car is registered in my name, and it, I dug through the glove box for nearly the duration of the stop. We were off the side of the road in 15-20 minutes, and I could not find it. And on top of that, I could not find my, my proof of insurance on my phone is digital. Um, and I don't carry the paper card with me because I lose that too. So I just keep it in my phone. Well, the app for the website was updating because I got pulled over at 4.30 in the morning. And I thought, I'm getting ready to go to jail for no insurance or I'm getting ready to get a big ticket for no insurance. And the cop was kind of, had a different mood about him until the, the app finished updating and I could get the, uh, and it wasn't like the app in my phone, it was their website was updating. And the cop's mood definitely shifted when my, uh, proof of insurance came through. So, I was about to be in some sort of trouble because I had no registration and no proof of insurance. The only thing I had on me was a driver's license. But anyway, um, and I told him, I'm like, look, if I know for absolute 100% guarantee that a cop is arresting me falsely, that he planted drugs in my car, that he, that he, uh, is a, you know, I didn't break this law that he said I did, that he's misinterpreting the revised, the KRS statute, Kentucky revised statute, that he's, you know, misreading that, that he's misapplying it to this situation, that for, and you, I could go on and on, but for whatever reason, I know for a verifiable fact that I'm being falsely arrested. I said, I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to fight that cop out there in the street. I said, because it ends up with one of us hurt or dead. I said, I'll go to jail. I'll talk to the judge in the morning. I'll make my case. I'll get out on, uh, on recognizance or bond. And at that point, I'll deal with it that way. I said, there's no way I'm going to fight that cop. I said, because it always ends ugly when you do that. He's like, yeah. I said, because if I decided to fight you, if you were trying to arrest me and I decided to fight you, I said, one of us is going to end up bloody from a fight. Yeah. I said, or one of us is going to end up seriously hurt from a fight. You know, broken something. Yeah. I said, or one of us is going to end up dead from it. He goes, yeah. So, don't fight the cop. You know, there... I, now, I said all that to say this. Cops are human beings. Human beings are fallible. Human beings make mistakes every day. I'm sure that there are cops out there that are uh, badge-wearing saints, so to speak, and I bet that they make mistakes every day. That doesn't mean that they're bad, that doesn't mean nothing, but I'm sure that they make mistakes. 
So, that in mind, even if you know for 100% fact they're making a mistake, take it to court. That's where you make your case. That's where you make your argument. That's where you have your fight. Uh, give you a really funny case at some point. Give you a really funny story, and then I've got time for me to jump off of here. Good buddy of mine, gentleman of color as a matter of fact, uh, got pulled over somewhere, accused of doing 15 or 20 over. And he's like, I never drive that fast. He's like, the most I'll go over to keep up with people is like 8 or 9 over. After that, if they want to go 20 over, they're going to have to go around me because I ain't going that fast. Cop popped him. Radar said he was going so far over. He represented himself in court, pled not guilty. Went to court representing himself. Did he, the, he got the cop's dash cam from that day. He was in the center lane of a six lane highway so three lanes going each direction and when he got pulled over he was clustered in with cars in front of, behind him and on either side of him and so he's like so his argument to the judge was how can that cop be 100% sure that since there was that many cars all around me that I'm the car that he hit that read that I was going this fast. And on top of that, that particular radar gun was uh, out of date. And so he actually had researched that model of radar gun's accuracy on reporting whether or not you were exceeding posted or not. And it was, um, it was only about 60% accurate. And so his case to the judge was convictions are supposed to be based on reasonable doubt, and here's all the cars around me on the dash cam footage, and then here's how good your radar is, the way I look at it, that's 60, that's a 70% chance that he didn't get me, this ticket shouldn't be in court, the judge said, you've researched your stuff, you know exactly what you're talking about, you've got all this documentation and evidence, and threw it out of court, he had, he paid nothing. So, the guy knew he wasn't speeding, knew he wasn't in the wrong, did not fight with the officer. He told the officer that wrote him a ticket when he got the ticket. Have a great day. I will see you in court, sir. So, that's what I've got to say about that. Anyway, folks, I've gone on long enough. I'm nearly to my driveway. You all have a good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in for another Cruise of Smooth. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.